I am, um, would like to sort of kick us off again for the afternoon uh, in a panel that I'm uh, quite, uh, not just very sort of pleased that we have a panel on perspectives from the Global South, but also very proud and honored to be, uh, have been asked to introduce this panel. Um, there, you know, from in the 10 years that I've been, uh, I've been with PKP and that I've been working with PKP, I started working in Latin America and uh, really understanding open access from the, and getting involved and really buying into being um, committed to promoting and pushing open access because I was living and working with and interacting with the editors of uh, Latin American journals. And it was from understanding what were the things that they were doing, their needs, their challenges, and seeing the benefits that open access could, could bring them that made me personally commit with, with the cause, commit with PKP. And seeing the role that PKP has been playing in the Global South. While a lot of the discussions continue to be, uh, there's some recognition of um, that, uh, that, there's some sense that it's changing, but the discussions for a long time have been that open access was supposed to be good for the Global South because uh, it was about giving them access to the things that were being produced elsewhere. Whereas when I arrived in Latin America and I saw that open access was this, there was a vibrant sort of open access culture and that open access wasn't, they weren't valuing open access because it was, oh, we're getting access to these things coming from somewhere else. It was, we're using this because it's a, as a way of having a bigger voice and having greater participation in the global knowledge exchange and the role that PKP has played in giving people that wanted to publish their works uh, in the region and giving them a platform on which to make their voices heard and have them contribute uh, by showing what it is that they're working on. And I think more even now there's more greater recognition that it's not just about them putting out their research but also showing the rest of the world what it is that uh, what are the ways in which open access can be provided? Uh, what are the ways in which the models of open access can, can work that are different than the ways that it works in the North? And so playing this role that, of providing uh, a platform, I feel like I've been bouncing back and forth between the North and South, trying to help people here in North America look at the way that things are done in the Global South. And it's um, having a panel like this where we are um, trying to give a voice and, and giving a place for those perspectives, the lessons that, uh, uh, that uh, the South has to offer to the rest of the world, the models that it has to offer, and three, two of the, uh, the platforms from Latin America that are going to be on this panel are examples of that. Uh, most, we're also going to hear from the uh, Academy of Sciences of South Africa, as well as some of the pretty innovative and creative things that they're doing and are lessons that the rest of the world can learn from. So it's a real honor for me to have an opportunity to present these next three uh, speakers who are going to give us this uh, perspective and the, what are the things that we can learn from the way that things are uh, being done south of the, in the southern hemisphere. Uh, so the first speaker that we're going to have up is Alex Mendoza, who has been working with Cielo, a long-standing initiative, one of the, the, the largest publishing sort of platforms from Latin America, publishing over a thousand journals. Uh, Alex Mendoza is in charge of, of working with the, the editors and interacting and, and coordinating all of the editors and their submission, and he's been a big part of uh, working with, the scholar, with OJS and with, uh, and with Scholar One and having uh, that interface between between what the editors and the authors are doing, and then and the Cielo platform as a publishing platform. So please join me in welcoming Alex to the stage. Okay. Well, hello. Uh, good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to be here today. Uh, thanks, Juan Pablo, for the great introduction. Um, it's my first PKP conference, hopefully not the last, and um, I will be talking about the role of Cielo on the bumpy uh, road towards the professionalization, internationalization, and financial sustainability of developing country journals. That's a wordy title, sorry. Uh, so just quickly about Cielo, for those who haven't heard of us, uh, we are an international cooperation program for the advancement of research communication. So basically everything that we do is focused on that. That is our main goal. And in order to achieve that, we have some specific objectives 
such as to maximize the availability, visibility, use, impact, and credibility of nationally edited journals and the science that they communicate. Uh, to improve the quality of such journals, of course, and to complement international bibliography. So, so where does, how does Cielo do that? Uh, where does the money come from? Uh, well, Cielo, the program is led by the Sao Paulo Research Foundation. It's uh, the largest research foundation in Brazil, also known as FAPESP. Uh, so as Juan Pablo said uh, very, very greatly, uh, so just to quickly show the timeline for the open access movement, Cielo was born in 1997. Uh, it was way before some of the most important uh, open access uh, initiatives took place. So that way, you can, you can consider Cielo as a, a pioneer uh, movement in the open access uh, scenario, and also uh, responsible for inserting the journals in Latin America in the open access movement. So Cielo is actually a network. It's now formed by 15 countries, mostly from Latin America, but also uh, Spain, Portugal, and South Africa. Uh, it's been in operation for 20 years now, so this year is our 20th anniversary. And uh, so you want some numbers? Okay, I'll give you some numbers. <laughs> so we have about uh, 1,000 active journals for across all of those countries. Uh, over 52,000 documents published per year, and around uh, 650,000 uh, documents overall, over all these years. And Cielo Brazil alone has uh, more than 1 million downloads per day, and that is using the counter methodology. So it's a huge operation. And just to uh, clarify, the, the Cielo is a Brazilian initiative, started in Brazil, and the other countries join it later. Uh, and each country is responsible for their own founding sources and uh, governance is also uh, uh, decentralized. Uh, although they all have the same policies, the same principles, and they, they follow Cielo Brazil's uh, guidelines uh, as, a, uh, as a motto. So we have three main functions in Cielo. So that is indexing, publication, and um, interpretation. So the indexing is the continuous evaluation of our journals, of the journals that want to be indexed in Cielo and also that are already in Cielo. So for that, we have uh, a criteria that we evaluate our journals. Uh, so that criteria is based on best practices, on uh, things that are being, are be doing, have been doing uh, uh, around the world. Um, so we are, the journals that, that, uh, that are in Cielo are constantly being evaluated. Um, our second function, function is probably our most popular one, is the publication. So we have a website uh, where we publish our articles in full, open access. Um, we preserve, we allow retrieval information, etc. And most recently, we started providing uh, online submission services. And our third function is an interoperability which is the sharing of content among, uh, across other indexes and services. So for that reason, we consider Cielo as a meta publisher. This is the Cielo Brazil team. Uh, we are based in Sao Paulo, and we are around 50 people in the office, and this was taken at the backyard of our office in Sao Paulo. Uh, in 2013, it was a very important year for Cielo because we established three main lines of action that we call professionalization, internationalization, and financial sustainability, which are the title of my long, uh, the long title of my presentation. Uh, so professionalization is to produce journals according to the state of the art. So we're always looking at the trends and what all the journals are doing. Uh, we are pushing things on our own journals to do the same or not the same, but what's what's good of it. Uh, internationalization is to insert our journals in the global flow of scientific uh, information. And financial sustainability is find ways to do this all with a low cost uh, model. With that, we hope to grow the performance of our collections and our journals as well. Uh, so, so to give you an example of professionalization, as of last year, all of the Cielo Brazil journals are using an online submission uh, system. So this is part of the Cielo criteria now. So if a journal wants to be indexed in Cielo, 
they have to be using an online submission system. And if they are already in Cielo, they have to be using as well, of course. This system must provide easy to obtain statistics on manuscript on number of papers submitted, number of papers rejected, sent to associate editors, reviewers, approved, etc. And also uh, time between submission and final decision and affiliation, uh, geographic affiliation data. So we need that data because it's one of the ways that we have to evaluate if the journal is following our guidelines, if the journal is having international uh, uh, submissions or international participation from reviewers and editors. So this is one of the ways that we have found. This is a distribution of uh, online submission systems in Cielo, Brazil. Uh, half of those, almost half of the, our journals right now are using a scholar one which is provided by Cielo thanks to an agreement between Cielo and Clarivate Analytics. That is 46% uh, of them. Then it's followed by OGS, uh, both the one that is provided by Cielo and the, one that is not pro the ones that are not provided by Cielo. And that's mostly the case of university portals. So we have a, a big part of Brazilian journals using uh, OGS, OGS in university portals. And then uh, the small portion, 13%, uh, are using uh, other systems available in the market. So we take care, we provide system for 180 journals of our collection. So that is 63%, it's a big number. And we provide uh, support and training, full training for those journals. That is when is the case of Scholar One by Cielo or OGS. Uh, so we provide support pre-training, during training, post-training. Uh, and in the case specifically of OGS, Cielo also provides all the infrastructure. So that means the editor doesn't have to worry about installing OGS or hosting it, uh, upgrading, backup. We do all that for them. Um, the other half, the other part, 37% uh, is journals that are use a different system that are not by Cielo. And we also hope that this number will go lower and lower by, uh, each year because we want to, it would be great to have them all under our responsibility. Uh, Cielo has developed its own publishing schema. We call it the Cielo publishing schema. Um, it's uh, based on JATS, uh, DTD. And we took some of the DTD from PubMed Central because that would be easier to make our journals available there. And we also, have some specific CLOs needs. And so the intersection of those two things, uh, both PubMed Central DTD and our own DTD, is what we call the CLO publishing schema. And it's all under the JATS umbrella. Um, so is this working? Is this all these guidelines, this criteria, this uh, request as we, that we've been making? Uh, yes, the numbers show that it is working. So. Uh, we have, an S we have uh, uh, set some, some uh, thresholds, some minimum and recommended percentage of international authors, f depending on the thematic area, for our journals. And by 2015, we had um, some, um, some um, interesting numbers. Uh, uh, four of the areas uh, already met the minimum requirement. Uh, and the estimation that by 2020, uh, most of them, uh, all of them will be uh, above the minimum and s most of them will be above the uh, recommended. That is their projection that we have been doing. Um, this is a 10 year evolution of the publication in, in documents in English. Uh, last year we published over 60% of our documents in English and by 2020 we hope to have uh, over 75% of our documents in English. Um, again, uh, for the internationalization, we uh, are always working to index our journals and papers or as, as much places as possible. So we have all of our papers available in Google Scholar, uh, Director of Open Access Journals, uh, Crossref, we provide DOI for all of them. 70% uh, of our journals are available in some major commer commercial indexes such as Scopus or Web of Science. Uh, we provide some services as well, such as uh, ReadCube. It's an uh, enhanced PDF. Uh, so apart from the regular PDF, uh, every document in Cielo is also available in a, 
uh, in Cielo Brazil, uh, in, available in a uh, enhanced PDF. We provide out metrics, uh, and soon, later this year, we will be providing Figshare as well. So this is the same distribution that I showed earlier, 46% uh, Scholar 1, 41 in OGS, and 13% other systems. Uh, regarding standards, we have been fully working as of the past three years in uh, JETS, following JETS, XML, uh, XML DTD. 80% uh, of our documents are under the Creative Commons BY license, and we expect to go over 95% by the next year, which is great. Uh, CLO also has a very good relationship with other major players in the open access movement, such as PKP, uh, OASPA, uh, Director of Open Access uh, Open Journals, um, Counter, etc. So this is just a diagram showing that where we were at the beginning and where we will be going uh, for the next few years. So in the beginning when Cielo established it, Cielo kind of made the most of the work, and it was a major player. Uh, the editors weren't that much involved, the authors even less. So the editors sent to us their, their files the way they were, and we, do, we did all the work. Um, this changed in 2013 when we uh, adopted the Cielo DTD. Uh, so we threw the ball to the editors. Now they are doing that. They are providing the files following our, our DTD. And so we we share some of the responsibility with the editor. Uh, it's it, it's also the same year we started working with uh, continuous publication, and that because of the XML adoption we were able to broaden our interoperability. For the next coming years, uh, we will be joining. We will be inserting the author as well in this. Uh, in display. So we will start to work with preprints uh, repositories. Uh, we are also uh, studying ways to offer authoring services. Uh, also research, uh, open data is a big thing for us, so we are looking for solutions for that. So now we can have more shared responsibility and more structured data from the beginning, not only from uh, not only at the at the end of the workflow, but have some structured data since the beginning of the workflow, uh, when the author is, becomes a, a more active player. Regarding the Cielo PKP cooperation, uh, just some historical data. We started using OGS by. 2006, we have around 50 journals that are using it. Uh, in 2009, Cielo Chile uh, is, has adopted it, but for this particular case, the support is still made by Cielo Brazil, so all the infrastructure is with us, and we also support their team, their technical team. Uh, this year, Cielo has joined, the Cielo Brazil joined the PKP uh, technical committee, uh, we hope that our experience, not only with OGS, but with other platforms, will help uh, to enhance uh, OGS and, ma and make it an um, even more compatible, competitive uh, um, platform. Um, Cielo's recommendations are to be included in the, in the core of, of OGS, of course, after approval from all the committees, etc. Uh, we also have been collaborating with texture development. We've published a blog post uh, yesterday in our blog, so make sure to read that to, to find out more about it. Uh, and we're also going to contribute financially to PKP for the development of its tools. Uh, we are expecting to uh, have a $30,000 uh, uh, investment from Cielo Brazil, Cielo Chile, and Cielo uh, Mexico. Uh, it would be a yearly contribution. And cooperation will, would, of course, uh, be extended to other products such as OMP. We have been working with, uh, we're starting working uh, uh, with OMP for Cielo Books. It's still a pilot program, but it's going somewhere. Um, moving forward, so Cielo Preprints for the next year, we'll, we hope to start using that not only for Cielo Brazil, but for the whole network. Uh, also, research data, we are uh, finding ways to make it uh, mandatory for, for our authors. Adoption, adoption of continuous publication. We have been 
uh, doing that for quite a while now. There have been some adoption, but we need more. So we've, we've been promoting it and it's working. We have some, uh, cons some uh, several journals are using that already, but hopefully the next few years this will increase. Of course, we also strengthen even more the insertion of journals in the global flow of scientific communication. And our new platform is coming uh, later this year or beginning of the next year. So the, our website has been looking like that for like 20 years and, and we're, it's time to change. So we are building everything from scratch and it's looking very great, very uh, new and very modern. So uh, look out for that. It's coming up shortly. Uh, you are all invited to check our blog. We have a blog. Uh, on blog.cielo.org. It's available in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And we cover all sorts of topics about scientific communication, such as uh, indexing of journals, bibliometrics, scientometrics, uh, ethics, and open access. Uh, we also have a newsletter that follows it. It's, a send, it's sent us somewhat monthly digests of what has been published in our blog. So you are more than invited to sign up for it. Uh, we are also on the social network, so you can find us on Twitter, on YouTube, and Facebook. And I'm happy to uh, invite all of you to the uh, Cielo 20 Years Conference. It's going to be held uh, next year in Sao Paulo on September 26, 27, and 28. It's going to be a huge conference to celebrate uh, our anniversary and also uh, talk some very interesting, trendy, uh, topics about open access and where we're going. Uh, so you're all invited to be there. And that was pretty much it. I thank you very much for your attention.